Before we start our update, we will take a look uh, how the eruption started as it had been seen from Fagradalsfjall, from the long ridge from the other side. This is quite impressive um, uh, footage. It was quite explosive uh, when it started and then the fissure expanded very rapidly to the sides. It's only two minutes, so we will watch it uh, to the end. This happened at uh, 8.23 last night. Already a day ago. <laughs> it is suspected uh, that at the start of the eruption we had 1,000 cubic meters of lava emitted from the fissures every single second. And lava travel at about one kilometer per hour. It should be noted that this eruption started without any significant earthquakes just out of nowhere basically there was no notice to warn the people and as we have confirmed earlier this is the most powerful eruption of all and lava already covered 7.9 square kilometers the largest territory so far but not in terms of volume the volume was bigger uh, at Fagratas 2021 Hello friends and greetings from Iceland. This is how volcano looks now in the night. Right now it's 1.30 am in the night in Iceland in the morning already. And the volcano is still active as you see. Though this footage is from one and a half hour ago. We will go forwards and you will see this is still a shooting lava. Yeah, this is more or less now. Five minutes ago this is how it looks right now in the night but the activity subsided significantly and we will go over the latest volcanic report from Icelandic Met Office what they say uh, the lava flow to the south is less than 250 meters away from the south coast highway and this afternoon the advance of the of this flow has been around 12 meters per hour compare it to 1000 meters per hour at the beginning of the eruption so uh, the flows the speed of flows dropped from 1000 meters per hour to 12 meters per hour so there is a decline in the eruption power which is considerably less speed than was measured earlier today if the speed of uh, of lava remains unchanged Lava will reach uh, South Coast Highway in about 20 hours, but I suspect that the speed of the lava flows will be dropping because of the decrease in activity. Uh, the lava would then have to travel an additional 350 meters to reach the sea after it reaches the road. So uh, there is some distance also to the sea after it crosses the road. Uh, if lava reaches the sea, it could have caused uh, a local hazard due to the rapid cooling of the lava. At first, there would be danger from pyroclastic uh, particles and gas formations, primarily hydrochloric acid, in a radius of about 500 meters from the point where lava would come into contact with the sea. Conditions would be life-threatening. 
as the distance goes the risk decreases and is negligible at the distance of more than three kilometers so it looks like volcano is somewhat dying at least right now it doesn't look very strong no it still looks pretty much impressive this is the live right now and as you see um, we have some craters forming up for the first time we have craters at this uh, fissure line early eruptions didn't build up any visible craters here you can see uh, even a few craters or one crater prolonged one crater with is shooting lava This photograph published by Icelandic Met Office shows the situation uh, at this area next to the ocean. So the lava flow is uh, somewhere here. It's still 250 meters now in the night towards the road and lava is traveling 12 meters per hour and the speed is likely to decline as the activity declines as well. Uh, and then from the road we have another 350 meters to the ocean so it's quite a distance uh, now the farm of Ron is here to the left and it had been fenced by a wall you see they built a protection defensive wall in case lava goes here what I doubt and there in the background you see the port of Grindavik which is rather close as well if lava would keep at one, uh, traveling at one kilometer per hour, of course, there would be danger to the harbor of Grindavik, perhaps the farm here and all those small houses. But you know, it's slowing down, and it's unlikely to make it to the ocean. It looks like, unless the volcano keeps erupting for many days, what we doubt, as we saw the previous patterns, which lasted. Um, very short one to three days max and here you see the map that shows the impact area if lava were to reach the ocean that scenario and the response plans related to it have been discussed uh, at the meetings of Icelandic Met Office and Civil Defense yesterday and today uh, the lava edge as you know is 250 meters from the road and this afternoon the advance of the lava flow has been around 12 meters per hour uh, if you look of the, de the development of the activity of the eruption today it is considered unlikely that lava will reach the sea uh, while the eruption continues it is nevertheless important to be prepared for this scenario as the conditions that could then arise a life threatening to those within the affected area. Little seismic activity has been recorded uh, in the area so far today. Jacked activity was high until midnight, but then the activity slowly decreased as the night went on and it's decreased even more during the day and now in the night. Now, Icelandic news uh, reported this evening that there are uh, fiber optic cables which run along the south coast road which is threatened by the lava. And they say if lava flows over Mila's fiber optic cable, Mila it's Icelandic communication company uh, which runs south of south coast highway, it would have little or no effect on telecommunications in Grindavik in particular the internet. This is what Dari Sigurdsson, manager uh, at Mila's technical department, says in the interview to the morning newspaper. The cable is buried 90 centimeters into the ground and if lava flows over it, it would take some time for the cable to be damaged by the heat. Uh, if it were to be damaged, uh, there would be other cables that would carry the radio communications internet communications to and from Grindavik. Uh, there are more trunk fiber optic cables uh, that connect into Grindavik area that carry 
the internet uh, communications between places this one is one of those so if one if this one goes off and is damaged by the lava the other uh, ways uh, will, will work in the meantime the speed of lava heading towards south coast highway has slowed considerably and it can be said that the lava continues to flow 12 meters per hour and if it continues it will reach the road in the next 24 uh, hours uh, then they say if lava reaches the cable it would be the fourth time Miller's fiber optic cable has been covered by the lava there is therefore considerable experience within the company regarding how to solve such problems if this one fails we just go into action to put uh, another one around or over the lava like for example when it flowed over the hot water pipeline from Svartsangi to Nartvik there was a fiber optic cable from us and there he says then the road was built over the new lava and we like others just laid or new fiber optic cables over it and if the lava reaches the cable it will take several weeks for the soil around the cable to warm up if the soil reaches the temperature of 300 degrees celsius the rope becomes um, the cable becomes unusable and another one is placed in its place so it shouldn't be an issue if the cable will get damaged because there are the other cables there are the internet cables connecting Grindavik which can be used and they are quick to install the new one with the lava if it happens. A new satellite image captured by Sentinel shows the spread of sulfur dioxide pollution from the volcano over the past 24 hours. This is the largest um, sulfur dioxide cloud that has been formed in all seven eruptions in Reykjanes Peninsula starting from 2021. And this is because of the fact that the power of the eruption in the first hours yesterday was much greater than has been seen in previous eruptions. Um, no numbers have been concluded yet, but it can be said that they are very high. During the eruption in February, the average flow for the first hours was about 600 cubic meters per second. And I wouldn't be surprised if the flow last night was close to 1,000 cubic meters per second. Uh, the gas cloud is now over the ocean where sulfur relationships disappear with a humid atmosphere. And if the cloud stays there for a few days and then blows back over the land, it, it can cause a blue haze of Iceland. Uh, such clouds uh, hang over the western part of the country for a few days following the eruption at Little Hrutur last summer. I mean the, the guys. Uh, sulfur dioxide is the chemical compound with the formula SO2. It is a toxic gas responsible for the odor of burnt matches. It is released naturally by volcanic activity and is produced as byproduct of copper extraction and the burning of sulfur bearing fossil fuels. Uh, it was known to all chemists as volatile spirit of sulfur since uh, at least 16th century. Acid rains, which are generated as a result of uh, SO2 injection into stratosphere, uh, are too dilute to affect human health directly but breathing smoke or even any air with elevated sulfur concentration is known to contribute to heart and lung conditions including asthma and bronchitis. Further, this form of pollution is linked to preterm birth and low birth weight. Stay tuned, uh, more updates coming soon. I wish you all the best and good night from Iceland. Be well. Uh, those footage that you see are from the last year. I am resharing them again as those eruptions are very similar as happening now and back then. All the best, be well.